scientists hope to learn something else from Deep Impact. Clues about how to stop a comet from colliding with Earth. Some thought Deep Impact might knock Temple One into a slightly different orbit. But the comet has continued on exactly the same path as before. It was a secondary objective of the Deep Impact mission to come up with a plan to mitigate an impact if we had to. Did we figure out what it would take to move a comet out of an orbit that was intersecting the Earth? We didn't figure out enough. Despite the inconclusive results, many still consider Deep Impact the best model for stopping a rogue comet. The key will be to send a larger spacecraft and to hit the comet much harder. Let's assume that this is the cometary nucleus. One way of slowing it down and having it miss the Earth in 20 or 30 years' time is to simply run into it. Bam. If that doesn't work, do it again. If that doesn't work, do it again. But some think we'll need a more radical approach. One plan calls for detonating a nuclear warhead near a comet to nudge it onto a different path. Controversial proposal because of the unknown consequences of releasing radiation in space. Others have called for drilling into the nucleus and setting off a blast inside. But as we've seen, this has the danger of turning one deadly projectile into many. The pieces could continue on the same orbit, and like the blast from a shotgun, wreak destruction over a wider area. Some have proposed less violent, yet equally intriguing solutions. They suggest putting lasers on the moon, where the Earth's atmosphere would not deflect them. The lasers could bore into a comet and melt its icy glue. We might even hitch a spacecraft to a comet and tow it out of our way. Whatever the solution, all ideas remain on the drawing board. If a comet is on a collision course, we may not be able to do anything. Even if we could tell tomorrow that something is headed our way, we don't necessarily have the means right now to protect ourselves. For one day, we might look to the heavens and find the comet with our number on it headed our way. March 23rd, 1989. An 800-meter-wide asteroid is about to cross Earth's orbit. It arrives just six hours after the blue planet has passed by. This is the equivalent of two airplanes missing each other by seconds. Humanity collectively should fear them because they do hit the Earth. But while comets can be emissaries of death, we're learning that surprisingly, they can also be agents of rebirth. In the turmoil of the early solar system, millions, if not trillions, of comets and asteroids pelted the primordial Earth. The massive collisions turned matter molten, peeled back the planet's crust, and sparked firestorms that engulfed the globe. Today, if not for the continuous erosion of wind, water, and heat, the Earth's surface would look much like the moon or Mars. But as scientists are now learning, that bombardment also produced unexpected results. Those icy comets may have brought the water that now swells the Earth's oceans. They may also have delivered organic compounds from that combination of water and organic materials, life slowly evolved. Comets might still be helping support the Earth's living things. Galactic snowballs are regularly drumming Earth's atmosphere millions of times a year. Some scientists say the ice balls, some as big as houses, disintegrate when they hit the atmosphere. 
but they leave behind fleeting clouds of water vapor, sustenance for life below. New York University's Dr. Michael Rampino takes the theory one step further. He believes the Earth endures a cosmic assault, like the one that helped form it, every 30 million years. Each barrage heralds a new cycle of death and new life. It's called the Shiva hypothesis, after the Hindu god of destruction and creation. So there was a period when there was a, a real reduction in the forms of life, and that's followed by uh, an explosion of life, because whatever survives can fill in all the environmental niches that were uh, opened up by the extinctions of the organisms that used to fill those niches. According to the Shiva hypothesis, the cycle will begin again in about 25 million years, when another barrage from above will cause a global catastrophe and mass extinctions. It's a controversial idea. Most scientists don't see solid evidence of periodic, not to mention predictable, bombardments. And no one has been able to explain why such periodic impacts would occur. Now, there has been suggestions that these impacts are periodic on the order of uh, 30 million years or so. The evidence is weak. I think the jury is still out on the so-called Shiva hypothesis. One thing is clear. There's much more we need to learn about comets. One experiment that hopes to add new information about their life-giving properties is already underway. A brainchild of the European Space Agency, the Rosetta mission will land a spacecraft on a comet for the first time. We want to see what is actually in the nucleus and on the nucleus, and the only way you can study that is to put a lander down. Rosetta left Earth in 2004. In 2014, it will rendezvous with comet Cheryamov gerasimenko As it follows the comet toward the sun, it will send a mini laboratory to its surface. The lander will drill into the nucleus and extract samples. Then it will analyze them. We didn't bring the sample back to the Earth, to the laboratory. We bring the laboratory to the comet and study it there. Rosetta will be a big step toward learning whether comets could have jump-started life on Earth billions of years ago. In future missions, Astronomers hope to probe even deeper beneath the surface of comets. The goal remains to increase our understanding of their makeup and their origins, as well as to strengthen our knowledge of how to stop one. But the next time a comet blazes across the sky, we can look at it in a whole new light not simply as a harbinger of death, but as a potent instrument in the evolution of life.